Yeah, you got it. Yeah. 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 On no conclusion. Do I need to read it? Mr. Chill? Yes. We need to reduce their time because you added somebody. So do we need to tell them no introductions or no? Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. You got it. Okay. You got it. Exactly on time. Yes, sir. the uh, March, two, March 20, 2018 Transportation Committee. We're about to reconvene um, from our earlier session at 2 p.m. My name is um, Kelly Robinson. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Board of Commissioners and I am the Transportation Committee Chair. To my far left is my colleague, Commissioner Mike Mulk here from the 3rd District. He's the Vice Chair of the Transportation Committee. Um, down to my far right is the County Administrator, Mark Teal. To his left is Miguel Valentin, Director of Transportation. To his left is Gary Watson, our Director of Multimodal Transportation. And to my left is Joby Milligan, who's going to be our uh, Committee Secretary. Um, to that point, please, we are filming this. Um, so those who speak will be at that end. The camera will be on you. This is for an official record. Um, 
Um, but before we get started, we are on time and we're going to keep our comments very tight. Um, we did say you had up to five minutes to give your public input. Um, this is not a script. We have no expectations <coughs> other than to give you accommodation. Um, if you go less than that, that's fine. We'll make that time back up. But we do have a hard stop. That being said, we're just going to kick off. Um, Director Watson um, is responsible for multimodal. He's going to give just a little bit of a brief overview of sort of what this um, topic is. And then we're going to go right into our list of speakers as listed, unless there is a request to do otherwise. Gary Watson, Director Takeover, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, very nice to see you tonight. We're going to be talking about four potential bus routes uh, this evening. Uh, what we have, and these, these four routes are the most recent routes that we submitted to the Atlanta Regional Commission. These are the four routes that the, the Atlanta Regional Commission accepted, and these are the four routes that helped us get pre-approval uh, for a big uh, federal grant to help us operate the buses for three years. Four routes, two serving the city of Douglasville, one serving the Lithia Springs Riverside Drive area, and then one that we're calling a direct route that goes from Douglasville, makes a stop in Lithia Springs, and then goes on, on in, into Atlanta to the Hamilton E. Holmes uh, Martin Station. Well, let me get That's there we go. Okay. First track we're going to look at I'm sorry. Sorry. While we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and just fill in the time. Uh, again, this has been an initiative that the Board of Commissioners set out on back in 2015. Our Director of Transportation at that time and, part, and the leadership of the administration came to the Board of Commissioners to ask for a request for uh, a transportation services study. Um, it, it, it has been acknowledged that it started out as a feasibility, but it wound up becoming a, a needs assessment. And the reason that the, the forecast was taken off and other the financials is because at that time we weren't quite sure we were ready to talk about financials. Thus, we have a demand or needs analysis. Uh, the Board of Commissioners passed that back in 2015 to move forward. We engaged a consultant. Um, in January 2016, we were um, basically delivered what we call a transportation services study. Uh, it is on our website, celebratedouglascounty.com, uh, under our Department of Transportation. It's a good document to read. Um, it does a pretty good job of establishing maybe four areas or four needs assessments. Um, roughly about, I would say the equivalent of about 10,000 residents. Um, the first one are what we want to call our seniors, right? Um, the silver boxes, gray goals, you know, our, you know, our senior citizens. Next is the disabled. These are big buckets of people that were um, established as needs assessment. The third bucket is what we call the millennials. Okay, which would be equivalent of the Generation Zs, anybody that's in that generation and below. There were part-time workers as being a major category. And there was a fifth component, which was smaller, which was sort of uh, what they call no car or single car. So those are the five categories of needs. Initially, it did start off uh, conversations where if we're going to look at this, we're going to look at it from a seniors and a disabled perspective. Right? It then began to acknowledge the fact that there was other parts of this whole equation that dealt with sort of economic development. So it wasn't just sort of a, a voucher program. 
The intent was to look at holistically the entire county and figure out what are the needs for transportation. As, we, as you know, Douglas County is right across the river from Fulton and Cobb. It recognizes that it's not Pluto. It recognizes that we're part of the bigger ecosystem and there's a need to be able to, there's a better um, requirement for us to move our people around. We do a great job moving people down I-20 and across Thornton Road and Camp Creek and along the railroad. We do a great job of moving cargo. But what about our own people? All right, so again, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get right into this. We're, we're Gary, I got it. Don't, don't worry. We're going to keep this moving because I want to make sure it's about you guys talking. So again, where we are is that the Board of Commissioners are, are probably within three to four months away from being awarded this what's the equivalent of about a $6 million grant. That gives us three years um, to uh, do what we want to call a pilot program on this to move us along. And at that time, we'll talk about other sources of financing. We do recognize that right now, we just want to test it. We're talking about a 15 passenger bus system initially. Nine, how many, Gary? 15 total buses, give or take, out the gate? Probably around eight to 10. Eight, eight to 10 out the gate for four routes. And so keep things in perspective. Now, we're not talking about the 50 passenger megabuses. We're talking about 15 you know, passenger, 12 plus one driver plus two handicapped. All right, that's our fixed route. That's all we're saying, start with that and we scale from there. With that being said, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, again, we'll address this later. This is for you guys to talk. Our committee is here to listen to you and this is of record. So what I'd like to do is to acknowledge that um, for the most part, um, a lot of the residents came to us uh, out of District 1. Uh, because of that, that is um, the Honorable Henry Mitchell from the first, Henry Mitchell III <coughs> out of the first district. He is not here today, at least I don't see him in the room. And so we're going to go ahead and move to our next speaker. Uh, per se, we want to acknowledge him as home rule. So with that said, uh, Madam State Rep. Kimberly Alexander, you're first up, please. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, I want to first thank the commissioner uh, and the members for inviting me here and uh, committee members. I want to first thank you again for being forward thinking and progressive as it relates to transportation. I want to give you guys a couple of stat numbers. 117 bus systems are in the state of Georgia. We're talking about out of 159 counties, there are 117 bus systems. That is a lot of bus systems. Um, for Paulding County, we have PCT, Paulding County Transit. For Douglas County, we have DCR, Douglas County Rideshare. So right now, in the 11 different transit authorities, there are 11 in 13 metro counties. MARTA is the largest one for the metro Atlanta area. I'm just going to call off a couple of these transit systems that you may recognize. Cobb County Transit, Gwinnett County Transit, Augusta Public Transit, Macon Transit Authority, Warner Robinson Transit, Chatham Area Transit, Warner Roberts Transit, Chatham Area Transit. That's just a few. Now, Georgia is a little bit forward thinking also too from the state level. So I want to tell you guys is that what we did this year in the Capitol, because there are so many systems in transportation, is that we are looking at ways that we can unify these systems because you got all these different systems in all these different counties. So we have House Bill 930, and then we also have a Senate bill. What does that House bill do? So this bill creates an Atlanta Region Transit League called the ATL Authority. This authority assumes the roles of the Georgia Regional Transportation, which is Greta. In the Transit Planning Organization for the 13 County Metro Atlanta Region, the region is comprised of the counties currently under the jurisdiction of Greta. Cherokee, Clayton, Coweta, Cobb, DeKalb, Douglas, Fayetteville, Fayette, Forsyth, Fulton, Gwinnett, Henry, Paulden, and Rockdale counties. So that's what that bill does. On the Senate side, they have another bill because you gotta think in terms of the funding. So that's Senate Bill 386, and based on the 216 figures, the transit funding between the 13 county regions would generate about $140 million 
a year based on a 1% tax. So both of those bills have passed. Let me tell you guys, your delegation voted for that. They voted on all those bills. We have one person that probably sustained, which means they didn't vote at all. But I can tell you the majority of your delegation here in Douglas County voted for that bill. What we're doing now is we're waiting for the bill to cross over from the Senate to the House. And now the bill that left from the House is over in the Senate. Once those bills are passed, then the governor will sign off on it. And I really want to wrap up with this because I wasn't going to, I don't want to take too long. I have another event that I have to go to. I've been elected here in the county for over six years. I want to tell you that when I'm going around and I'm talking to the citizens and I do go out and door knock. What I'm being told from the citizens, if you ask them what do they want to see here in the county, there are two things, economic development and transportation. That's always been, I don't care if I went in 2012, if I went in 2014, that has always been the issue is transportation. And so I want to say to you guys, I'm glad you all are thinking forward and that that 2015 study that you looked at is basically around in District 66. And I want you guys to know I support that. If there is a need for the citizens in District 66 and they say they want the transportation, I support that. As long as it's a needs base, in my understanding, it is. I want to also say too is that as this committee and I see some of the routes. You guys have to be very mindful about the routes that you have when there are citizens that's gonna benefit from it. And you say, well, I want you as a taxpayer to come over here and spend money here in this area, but I don't want that bus route here. We have to be very mindful of that. That's a fine line. You're telling taxpayers, I don't care if you get on that bus and ride that bus, just don't come here in this side of town. Think about how, think about what that says. Think about that. Also, I want to say this too. I represent Paulding County. What happened in Paulding County was a small airport that the commissioners and the business leaders thought that would be a great, great fit for the county. The airport came and it's supposed to have been just a little small little private flights going in and out. The minute they started talking about commercial flights, we have about five to six lawsuits up in Paulding County. Let me also tell you that that has stopped the growth for economic development in Paulding County. Nobody wants to hear about a lawsuit going on in the county. That's bad publicity. Now, you, we are seeing the growth over in North Paulding, but we're not seeing it in the central location of Paulding County. Some of the same signs that I am seeing for the buses are some of the same signs that I saw up at the airport, no airport. So let's be careful about that. It's negativity to the county, and if this is going to benefit the citizens of the county, let's make sure that we're doing that. Okay? Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. Thank you for your input. Next up, we have the Honorable Dr. LaShawn bird Danley, resident here in Douglasville. Please. Again, we're going to keep it close. Hi. Good evening. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Commissioner. Kelly Robinson and Commissioner Moncare. I am Dr. LaShawn Burr Danley. I'm a longtime resident of the city of Douglasville. I've lived on the north side for many years and certainly am well aware of the problems the residents on the north side of the tracks have faced over the years. Accessibility has been one of those problems. Up until this day, as each of us knows, there are times when people can't get across the tracks because of Norfolk Southern's trains. And while the long range solution is underway with construction on Highway 92 bypass and the railroad underpass, we all know things are, t is it, are in terrible shape at the moment. Frankly, with the closure of the Mosley Street crossing, accessibility for our residents and for our emergency response personnel is at a critical point. I hope all of us who are citizens of the city of Douglasville will work together to get this major problem resolved as soon as possible. I certainly pledge to do all I can do to make sure we remove current barriers 
to citizens on the north side being able to get across the tracks to medical facilities, to social services, to shopping, to the post office, to school, and to work. I'm a member of the Douglasville City Council. I've served on the City Council for more than a decade and recently started a new four-year term. For several years, I have been the chair of the City Council's Transportation Committee. Certainly, I recognize and have strongly supported local efforts by the City of Douglasville and by Douglas County to improve our streets, roads, and sidewalks, to increase the carrying ca capacity as needed in order to better accommodate our growing population. I am pleased with much of what has been accomplished, and I pledge to continue to work on transportation projects which benefit our overall community. A sound, solid, and comprehensive transportation plan is more than asphalt and concrete. Our streets and sidewalks serve to give us where we want to go, but if there were no vehicles to transport us to our destinations, our streets certainly would lose much of their value. It is proven by many instances how transportation infrastructure is one of the most important factors to our country, states, and communities economic progress. Transportation issues and infrastructure delays will affect this progress. The city of Douglasville over the decades have faced and overcome a number of challenges, some which have caused our community to be divided and to deny parts of our community equal access to certain facilities, certain rights, certain services, and even certain neighborhoods. Those barriers now have been removed and going backwards is not the answer. I support the transportation project and I would say let's move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Next we have Robert H. Caldwell, Urban Redevelopment Agency. Please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Reverend. Honorable Chair, Honorable Vice Chair. I've lived in this county all of my life. And the majority of those years was spent in the city limits of Douglasville and in District 1. And for many, many years, we have been waiting on a bus system for the county, some type of transportation center, uh, uh, system that would aid the citizens of Douglas County. I have experienced the need for a bus system. When I was going to school, traveling back and forth from Atlanta to uh, Douglasville, there was a bus system that came out of West Georgia all the way to Atlanta on 78. And when we came back in the afternoon, we would have to get off the bus and there was no transportation to the north side or to the south side. And we would have to walk to our destinations. I've experienced the need of um, a bus system because when I tried to get a job, you couldn't get one too far away because you wouldn't have transportation to get there. I've experienced it for school systems. I've experienced it because I have personally taken people who were walking in the rain. I've taken them to Kroger to get their um, prescriptions filled. I've taken them to the bank and I've taken them to the post office. And I know that they need transportation. I have seen them walk up the street, walk up Dallas Highway, and my heart was just melting because they had so far to go and some of them were crippled. They were not senior citizens, and they were not even disabled people. They were people that had just, some of them just left the hospital, some of them had just, were, were just sick and didn't have transportation. So I know the need. Uh, for a person that needs transportation. So as a member of the URA and as a resident of Douglas County, I am in support of a bus system. And I believe that it's our responsibility to make sure that the quality of life of everybody in the county can be the best that it can be. I've talked to all the citizens of my street. I've talked to citizens in my community. 
and we both agree and we stand together in support of this uh, bus system that you already have started. So we commend you for your efforts. We support you 100% for this new bus system that you're proposing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam. Thank you for your contribution to Douglas County. Um, next on our list, let's see, we'll keep moving along, is Bishop Artis Crum here from Light. Yes, sir. Okay. Light and Salvation Bishop Outreach. Artis Crum from Light and Salvation yes, Outreach Church, and uh, thank you all for having me here today. Uh, I used to work in Roswell, Georgia, off Hope Bridge Road. And uh, in the mornings, when it, we had no traffic and it didn't rain, uh, it would take me one hour to go to work. In the evening time, at 3.30, 4 o'clock, when everybody was going home, it would take me anywhere from two and a half hours to three hours to, to get home from work. Uh, uh, they built a uh, modern system, modern train system that go right up to Hocum Bridge Road, all the way up to Mansell. And while I'll be coming down on 400, I can look to my left and see that bus going south. And I'm sitting down the track and looking, saying, how come we don't have a bus system that could connect to the train system. I could ride that bus to the train system, jump on a jump train and head right on to work. That was back years ago. I now work at Atlanta Airport. Even though I'm a pastor, I'm a bishop, I still work. Full-time job and pastor. Uh, and it makes me very angry that some of the people I work with can go right upstairs and jump on the train and take off. To even go to a ball game downtown, I got to drive half the distance to get on a train system. Drive, drive to Hampton, uh, eat homes, get a train system, leave my car there, head downtown. And so to make a long story short, I didn't put a speech together like all these great candidates that did, but uh, I just want to make it, make it uh, real clear that I am 100% support of the train system. It's very, it's really needed here. Uh, it will help our transportation. Uh, it would help on the pollution, and it help a lot of people who don't have cars. I didn't realize even today, you'd be surprised at how many people in 2018 who don't have cars. Uh, my church, we go pick up people, bring them. So again, I'm in complete support of the transit system and anything I can do to support it and help, I'm going to do it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your input in today's process. <coughs> Next up, we have Ms. Andrea Walker, General Manager of WACA, please, and a resident here in Douglas County. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I've been a resident here for several years now, and in addition to being the General Manager, I need to explain my position and why. I'm the Atlanta market manager for the ninth largest radio conglomerate in the country. Now what that means is, is that in addition to being a resident, I can also supply jobs. Sadly enough, I am the only resident of Douglasville, period, that works in Atlanta at my office. And part of the reason for that is because if someone has to check off on that application, do you have reliable transportation, yes or no? nine times out of ten, if not ten times out of ten, if they do not have a car or if their one family, one car family has a car going in a different direction to Cobb County or whatever, they are not able to get to my office and therefore they have to check no, which means they are not the top candidate for the job. Now before I had this wonderful and you know thing that I have for this title, I was a regular average citizen. I've made, you know, as, as little as $10 an hour and going up, you know how it is. And let's talk about what happened to me recently. So I had a death in my family. It's called the death of the second car. And it was my son's car, which means that my son now needs mommy to take him places or give him my car so I can take an Uber. Well, I have a job that I can afford an Uber, or so I thought. So let's talk about what I had to spend. So an Uber is $28 on an off-peak time if you're doing a pool and you're sharing it with someone, which means you now have to allocate that extra hour to hour and a half to get to work. 
Now, during peak hours, which of course means that's the time when most people are going to and from work, we're looking at somewhere around $55 up to $74. Well, good Lord. And if you count that, that's one way. So that means that going both ways, we're looking at $56 minimum, $105 maximum. That's $280 a week minimum. That's $525 a week maximum. This means that a person that is making what I used to make, $10 an hour, which just by simple mathematics is about $400 a week, just to get to work, they can't afford it. Now, let's say that they're able to borrow money for a couple of weeks while your car is in the shop or whatever the situation may be between getting that new car <coughs> that everyone in Douglasville must have. Well, now we have a situation that they're in debt. Or we have another situation that they take the job with the hopes and dreams that somehow they'll figure it out. But with a $10 an hour job usually comes a stipulation that should you miss work, you're going to be fired. You're terminated for not being able to keep your job and get there on time. So as you can see, this causes a problem. When I was a resident, it would make it difficult for me to get certain jobs if I didn't have a car. And now that I am an employer, I have the same difficulty being able to supply the same jobs that I used to have to the very people that I say hi to at the store. And the sad part about it is that getting to the store is equally as hard. You're spending all your money to get to and from work. Well, when exactly do you go to go shopping and how exactly do you get there? And imagine if you're not disabled enough to get aid, but you just hurt walking. How much can you actually carry? Can you get a week's worth of groceries? And we all know that when you pick up stuff on the fly, you spend more money than if you do it in a week. So I do support this. I support it heavily. And I hope that everyone understands that this is not a matter of convenience. It's a matter of opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for your input and contribution today. Next, we have um, Mr. Maurice Evans, Medline Industries. Welcome. Hey, welcome. Good evening. And thank you, Commissioner, for having me. Um, some of you may know Medline Industries is probably one of the largest employers in the county. Uh, we recently won the Chamber of Commerce Large Business Award. Um, over the last two years, we've hired over 250 employees. I still have over 60 jobs available. One of our biggest barriers to attracting talent is the lack of transportation. I'll speak about facts. Four months ago, a young lady at 7.30 in the morning was walking down Riverside Road on an attempt to go to work to provide for her family, was struck by a passenger car and died. Lack of transportation, I can directly say, impacted the family's future going forward. I currently have 10 or 15 employees that Uber to work. I have another two or three that exit MARTA at Fulton Industrial and walk two miles just to come to a job. We are currently participating in the county's initiative to encourage the youth to learn and understand about manufacturing and to get, gain more employment. All students don't go off to college. There are jobs here in the county, but guess what? <coughs> How will those students actually even get to work? if there's no transportation options for them. So am I in support? More than in support. This is a need. <coughs> I'm a product of Grady. I'm a resident of Atlanta. I'm a Grady baby. I've seen Marta go from zero to where it's at now. And I knew back in the 70s and 80s, the biggest thing that happened was Atlanta's inability to be a mega city sooner than it became was just the fact that the shallow mind thought of what the Rapid Transit Authority would do. I've heard on the news, I've heard from citizens of this county say, oh, transportation is going to bring drugs and crime to Douglas County. That is about as preposterous as I've ever heard. I, I don't know one person that has stole a, a flat screen TV and hopped on the bus to get back home. <laughs> this initiative is needed. Our company invested $55 million <coughs> two years ago in the continuing to employ citizens of Douglas County because we feel like there are adequate resources but those resources can't get to us with the lack of transportation alternatives. 
So I'm 100% for it. Whatever we can continue to do to support you, we're there with you. So thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your input and thank you for the mint line. Um, let's see, it. is Charmaine to pass here from the Hilton Garden Inn? No? Okay. What do we have next? We have one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next we have Faye Carter of New Horizons. And she is resident here in Dallas. Resident. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Just sitting here listening to everybody and thinking about myself as Judge Carwell had. I grew up here. This is home for me. I've been away, but I am a resident, proudly to say, of Douglas County, registered and everything. And a part of the New Horizon, the new committee for the North Side, I'm on that committee. I enjoy, I enjoy getting out in the neighborhood talking to people who now remember me and to speak to them on what's happening in Douglasville. I am so, so proud of what I see. With that, I didn't have a speech, but I wanted to just thank you for welcoming me back. And what I support is the transportation system that you do need. We badly need that. And I support that. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Secretary, is there anybody else that signed up to give input? No. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to close this hearing. We appreciate all of your input into this process. Um, just by way of background, some of you came in a little bit later. Um, this particular meeting was set because um, there was a need um, to meet with the residents of District 1. At our last commission session, um, there was conversation that went on regarding um, an action that the Board of Commissioners needed to be taken. Madam Chairman, Dr. Mona Jackson Jones asked me, as the Chairman of the Transportation Committee, to take that back and work with one of our um, district commissioners. Um, who had somewhat of an objection to our approach to the process. In essence, he wanted to make sure that a voice was being heard on uh, his district. Um, therefore, we made accommodations for those individuals who are primarily here, even though there was others that not are directly tied to District 1. Our goal is to make sure that we settle uh, all matters regarding this transit system, this, this process. We plan to move forward, short of, and I, again, I will say it, Madam Chair, it's very clear, without the grant, we move not forward. With the grant, we move forward. It's that simple. But that being said, in the meantime, there are things that we have to smooth out, as we say. The four routes are the four routes that we sort of highlighted earlier for those who were not here at the very, very beginning. We did discuss them briefly. They'll be smoothing out. Right? There, may, you know, there may be some path changes that need to be done. Uh, we're not into the bus routes and things of that nature yet because our third-party contractor will come on board, and they're the ones to do that. Douglas County, as an administration, it, it's not like it landed in Fulton that it has an advanced um, operations. We're going to outside, outsource this to a contractor, right? So we, we believe that we're, gonna, we're doing this right. In other words, let's bring in some experts in here who know how to set up a system. We don't have time to learn on a curve. Your money is valuable, right? We don't have to learn that way. Though we do appreciate the federal dollar that's here that gives us a three-year runway to do this pilot program. And we're going to learn a lot. Right? We believe during this period of time we're going to learn a lot, we're going to grow a lot, we're going to fulfill our goal of economic development. But, but we recognize, please don't get us wrong, we're not trying to urbanize Douglas County. That needs to be said. We recognize a lot of people moved either here, from Cobb, from Fulton, from sort of the metro area, and those who grew up here. It's, it's, it's both. Right? And one of the things that we are committed to, there is, and I give uh, my colleague, uh, Commissioner Moog here, when we talk about our four commission districts, he's the one that coined what's called character areas, and they're very, very different. Again, if you think about District 1, it's primarily what? What they call um, suburban city, right? You've got me, which is District 2, which is close to the Cobb and Fulton, across the Chattahoochee is what? We're pretty much, you know, that suburban, urban feel. District 3, which is along the Chattahoochee, all the way to the line, in essence, it's pretty much that, that pure suburban sort of country. It, it's our water rent, it's conservation, right? That's very different than District 4, which is what, so we want to call pure rural. Very different. We're not saying that this is a decision of one versus the other. It's really about best of both worlds. And we believe that there is something about the quaintness and the beautiful of Douglas County. 
We don't want to urbanize, but yet we at least can upgrade, right? We can upgrade ourselves. We can do better. And so our whole goal here is to try to make sure that we gave access to you as citizens. Um, will be another time when we'll come back and we'll debate some of the issues that need to be resolved regarding the system in times, uh, in times to come. Uh, our very next action, and I believe we had a committee meeting today, uh, we have a consultant that will come on board. This will be my final statement. A consultant will come on board. The collaborative firm was awarded a contract. It was a small contract of $50,000 for their job, um, as they did with the jail system, uh, which we, I think we paid them $170,000 is to go out into the community and do what we call public education. Not propaganda, fact-based education of what this system is. And recognizing that we're not just when we go out here and do public education, we're not just talking about the proposed route. We have four functions that we already provide to citizens that they still don't even know that we do, right? And so we want to make sure we educate them on the things as far as our ride share and our van pools and our voucher program. So there's almost in essence, there's four things that we already provide citizens that they don't uh, primarily know about, and then obviously this much broader one. So we're moving the county forward. Our, go our goal here is tasked to sort of work through the issues with the, uh, with the citizens. This meeting was all about you, getting a record to say that your voice was heard, it wasn't marginalized. Uh, we see you and we hear you. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to yield just to my colleague, Commissioner Bolker, do you have any comments? No. I don't mention the public meetings coming up, but you already did. You, you still can get a comment, though. No, that's all right. Good. You, you, you good? I'm good. Thank you, mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting stands adjourned. Thank you.